everybody welcome to episode 1019 of flow wrestling radio live i'm your host christian piles joined today by james dean raider to my right he's got his best windbreaker on ready for all types of wind rain etc no wind stands a chance against me not a shot to my left tyler messenger my, I've, ne- I've never i've never have to be i've Damn. never gotten clear on how you how it is you say this say your last, me, me, messenger Tyler Messengers is here. He's from Michigan by way of California, by way of skateboard. Yes. And he does not have a card to get into the building, which could be a result. At least I didn't well, lose it in, where did Ollie lose his stuff? <laughs> Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic. Yeah, that's highly embarrassing. And we have Ben Askren. He's in the frozen north. How are you, Ben? Hey, we're, it's actually not frozen. It's beautiful out. It's, it's 42. It's sunny. Couldn't be better. Uh, there's no way it says 42. I was just out there. I think you're lying. <laughs> do, do you check? No, I'm just making it up. Fact check. You're just making 52, actually. 50. 52. Beautiful and sunny. Okay. I was pretty close. Yes. Well, that is nice. Well, hey, you know, this used to be a tradition. I feel like we've avoided it for a couple Uh-oh. months what? now. We used to get news dumped every single Thursday. Oh, every single did. Thursday, we would get news dumped. We'd, we'd come back Monday and be like, they got us again. We had a pretty good streak. And then the ultimate news news dumps on Thursday. One, Vito out of trials. That's huge news. And the biggest news of wrestling, the retirement of the legendary John Smith uh, from Oklahoma State. Ben, what were your mm-hmm. thoughts when you, when you heard this news? Yeah, I think I was working out. I, I believe if I remember right, I was, I was working out and someone else had got on the private. And they're like, John Smith retired. And it was like, wait, what? Um, I guess I thought if it was going to happen this off season, it would have happened like the Monday after nationals, right? They would have said, you know, he would have said, Hey, this is my last thing. And, you know, kind of like maybe even like Borelli where they celebrated his last season. So it's kind of strange that it waited till almost a month after NCAA is to make it happen. Yeah. I, I wonder, um, what, was it something where coach Smith didn't know that that was going to be the reality? Did he? Was he like, I don't know if I'm going to retire. I don't know. And then he gets yeah. to he gets a week. The dust settles after the season. He's like, OK, I'm ready. And then you start going through that process. That's that's my, you know, a, pre, a presumption. You know, I don't know yeah. that to be the case. I feel like after you know, he did it for 33 years, I feel like, um, man, I feel like when the co- older coaches retire, they generally they know what's coming. They know what it feels like. And they just, you know, like I said, they, they kind of plan it out almost like Borelli did. So, yeah, def, definitely a surprise. Maybe, um, I guess maybe it's a good time to break the news that, well, the real reason he's retiring is to be the next uh, guest host on FRL. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was a funny tweet. Yeah, I mean, the stars really aligned there uh, to, make, to yes. make that happen. So they said, that everyone is asking what, what's going to happen when, when Ben. Why do we need John when we've got the best John impersonator yeah. already on the show? Yeah, there was a, <laughs> there was a request for... I'm retiring. For... <laughs> Perfect timing. Look at this. Within two weeks. You're retiring from your life of impersonation? Of being an impressionist? But, uh, yes, that also. But no, uh, think about... I was thinking about him on FRL. I was thinking, it would be number one, it would be great. But you guys would be too scared of him. You guys would be way too scared of him. He'd be like, nope, nope, JD, JD, shut it. <laughs> I'm up up there. You keep talking like that. Yeah, I, and, and I would have Jay to shut it. Just shut yeah, up. you'd have to yes. shut up. Um, when John Smith talk, you listen. Yeah. Well, I don't know him particularly well. I think that would be the main impediment, and the fact that he would have no interest in doing a podcast. He was uh he was pretty good on the radio on uh, the radio on the on the call for the Olympics. Oh yeah, I mean he'd be good at whatever mm-hmm. he wanted to do, but yes. it just doesn't seem like something that would interest him. So that was a funny joke yeah. that someone said though. Um. Yeah, so I guess the 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 big question is, you know, who comes in, who ends up being the the head coach at Oklahoma State. That's the um, next thing, and how fast do they fill this role? Is they need to do it fast? Do they? Absolutely. I don't think so. Why? Really? Well, well I just think fast? the longer you go without, um, what's fast? I guess not like a day, but you know, say if it went three or four weeks, I think that would be less than ideal. Okay. You're going to have the portal closing and, you know, uh, there's probably going to be some people on the team who are like, well, who's going to be next? Is it, is it going to be Coleman? Is it going to be someone outside of the program? 
Uh, is it going to be an Oklahoma State alum, like a Pat Papalizio? Like, what's going to happen, right? Um, so I would think that would be relevant. Who should Oklahoma State's first phone call be, Ben? Man, I'd call Pat Pop and just see. I would just see what he's up to. <clears throat> yes, yeah. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> what are you up to? Hey, hunch what he's up to. Up? I, are you coaching wrestling still? I knew it. <laughs> you got any interest in uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma? Did you love your time here? Oh, you did. Oh, all right. Do you think yeah. uh, Oklahoma State should look outside? Because this is, uh, I, I did a video about this, but Oklahoma State, I think, is one of, if not the most, like, insular programs in college wrestling. Very few members of the staff are non-Cowboy alums. Do you think there's, yes. should they look outside of Oklahoma State tree? Um, It doesn't feel like they're going to, so I'm not, I'm not even really considering it because I don't, I just don't think that's a possibility. Yeah, I think they are going to stay within, and they haven't had a lot of. Well, they've had like five or six head coaches only in the whole length of the program, which has been a, a very long time. Yeah, not not many. It's not a lot. No, well, you know, John was thirty three years, and Gallagher yep. was a long time, and yeah, I forget how long Joe C was there. He was the one that was a little shorter. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Pat Pop would be an interesting call. I, you know, I think Coleman is definitely someone who could do it. You know, Neil Arisman just won Coach of the Year. He is obviously an Oklahoma State graduate uh, at Little Rock. So there's kind of a whole bunch of good choices. Uh, you know, he's John Smith is – he's kind of like the the one after Gable. Gable had that really ridiculous coaching tree, and now John Smith has a really ridiculous coaching tree. He's got athletes who wrestle for him all over the place. He does. Uh my my prediction is they go with Coleman, Coleman taps Arisman to be the his associate head coach because if Coleman slides up, that creates a vacancy for his old role, and maybe he'll look to just slide everyone up and just hire another assistant. But I think that's just my guess. That's who he's reached out to in the past, back when yeah. um, you well, know they wrestled on the even... same team. They were buddies and everything. Yeah, I don't know if they were on the same team or not. They definitely were because I remember Neil Arisman was. Re yeah, for sure they were because Coleman was younger than me, and I remember uh, Neil Arisman wrestled Chandler multiple times. So they, they were absolutely on the same team for okay. at least a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I just remember mm -hmm. Neil wrestling in the 2011 NCAA's. That just feels like kind of removed from Coleman's. So. Yeah, Chandler graduated oh nine, so that was probably oh eight, oh nine, and Coleman was younger than me, and I graduated oh seven, so he had to be at least eight oh eight oh nine. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, somewhere there. So they're teammates, and but clearly mm -hmm. close. They they worked closely yes. together at UNC. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think the, I, I'm curious what what direction they go and what what we learn about the the process. Is it because it feels presumed that it's Coleman done deal and I don't, I don't know if that's the case or not. Well, I mean, you probably are guessing they're not going outside Oklahoma State alum. Also, uh, Pat Papalizio is obviously one that's doing a really, really good job. And then, you know, honestly, you look, I just, I just looked at the top 10 NCAAs this year, and it's like you look at those head coaches, they're not going anywhere, none of them. I would be, I would be so surprised if any of them left. And it's like, who else are their options? You know, you say like a, a Mark Branch was an Oklahoma State alum. And he had a few hot years in Wyoming, but now the last few years maybe haven't been quite as great. So that doesn't seem like a possibility. Like, where else would they go? Well, okay, let's we, – we all know the, the coaching tree. You got you got yep. Erisman, Coleman, Branch, Pendleton. Pendleton. Those are the, the yep. main ones. Okay, outside of that, outside of the tree, you, you say you look at the top ten, you, you see no one that would – no, would, would, I, yeah, it does. No one that would be this. a good option or no one that would consider leaving? Cause I, no I, one that, like, uh, Gray at Cornell, Bormet at Michigan, Dresser at Iowa State, Brands at Iowa, Jones at Arizona State, uh, Roby at Virginia Tech, Ryan at, uh, Ohio State, Manning at Nebraska, and then there's Oklahoma State. Like, who, who in that, I can't, it, it ain't, in any imaginary world, I can't imagine any of those guys leaving. Listen, I, I, uh, I just disagree. Am I crazy? Yeah, you're crazy. Really? I, I think you're, who? You're, Tell me. Well, listen. Well, it's not about who yet. the The first point is, is Oklahoma State a better job than these other jobs? It is the the funding, the opportunity, likely the financial, is going to be greater than that of most of these programs. And and listen, mm. I'm just as an example. I'm, I'm a huge Virginia Tech fan. 
But the idea that the Virginia Tech head coaching job is a better job than the Oklahoma State head coaching job, you know that's not the case, Ben. Um, and I don't. I think that's the case for a lot Fair. of programs. Air, Arizona State, that's a good job. But you think Zeke Jones doesn't see Oklahoma State and think, ah, I might be able to do a little bit more there? Sunkiss no, just, I Sun think, Kiss actually, just I folded? No. No? No way. You don't think he could do Heck better? No. Uh, well, I don't know if it's do better. It's kind of a, uh, for a lot of these guys, what do they want in their life? And Zeke Jones was an Arizona State alum. He got kind of like his dream job. He's doing a good job there. I know he likes living there, like to to move. I don't know. Have you been to Phoenix and have you been to Stillwater? This like, is all about your hatred of Stillwater. Ben. No, it's not. Everything it's about back to that. me being a normal adult and realizing like, well, you know, I, I love wrestling. I freaking love wrestling. But there Whoa. is a, more to life. Like, where do I want to live? Uh, you know, is my family around? These type of things, they are worth considering. The bar for normal adult has just been lowered. Can you imagine, Christian, if you told your wife you were going to go from your beautiful home in, uh, we'll say, Scottsdale, Arizona, and you're going to Stillwater? She'd be like, divorce. She'd, no, no, she'd be done. like, <laughs> she'd be like, as long as I'm by your side, dear. Ha, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, you know, some people would prefer still water. Yeah, some people believe like, it or not. Some people like a simple. That, that is fair. A simple is life. Fair. Um, simple life. Simple. Find an acreage. Get a pond. Do yeah. some fishing. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean, I I threw those two out, but I th I mean, even the great Sean Bormet. You're kidding. <laughs> The, al the alum yeah, thing is stop. the alum. <laughs> stop. The alum thing is, in, you know, with Zeke being an ASU alum, Sean being a, a Michigan alum. You know, yes. I, I understand it. Um, but my, Mike Gray, you know, he's an alum of Cornell. But bro, Mike Gray is not leaving Cornell. Just stop. I know. <laughs> Christian's just having fun. You're making man. terrible points this morning. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You, you think you actually are <laughs> pretending that this job is is not as good. It's still one of the best jobs. It's a great the job. I disagree but these people are happy and they're doing great and they're yeah not happy. I just don't, I think I don't see it. they're miserable ben <laughs> Stop. you don't know the oh darkness i don't know i feel oh like a God. lot of the best wrestling coaches are already making a, um, a decent amount of money even though yes. the oklahoma state job might be that much more what if it's 3x it's not probably not not uh, not of these top programs of some of the lower programs yeah probably but like of these top X. ones you say what if you reach out to jordan burroughs Say so JB, that'd be interesting. Six fifty, come on. I actually think that I actually think like someone like that. Uh, given that the Olympic trials is happening this week, and some of these people will not make it, I actually think that you know, uh, a Jordan, well, David Taylor's gonna make it, but like a Jordan Burroughs or David Taylor, someone like that who may be ready to move on, like that would be actually interesting. Yeah, someone like that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Jordan's not really interested in coaching in college, but that's what he says. That's what he says. That's but what he says. But I, I'm curious. So here's I have I have two thoughts on this. One, I I mean I take Jordan at his word for sure, but he is being asked that question in the middle of his competitive career, yes. right? So he he can't not think about one his experience when he was an assistant coach and he was in the middle of his competitive career. That's his college yes. coaching experience that he's had right now. That was not a good experience. If he, when he actually retires from the sport, this is one of the most, you know, y you still remain a competitor, right? And is, yes. is his, is he going to be able to scratch that competitive itch, yes. you know, just, you know, having a, having a club in, in Philadelphia? I don't know. And yeah, I don't even know that that's, that's what he wants to do. So he may say, ah, man, maybe we do want it. Maybe I do want to do this, man. You know, it was an opportunity. I didn't think when I retired the Oklahoma state head coaching position would be a possibility, right? Those could be things he's, yeah. he's saying and thinking. So I, while he said that, and I believe him, I think there's, it's a different thing. Once you've retired Didn't the competition, he also say <clears throat> part of his move to Philly was he wanted his family to be raised in a big city on the East coast. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, he's, I think he said that, uh, I think East coast is a big thing because both of their families are, are back there. Right. Um, yes. His I wife's from New York. He's from New Jersey. So there's a, a lot of reasons to not be there, but I'm just saying it's, it's, we've had tempting. It's tempting. We've yeah. had a couple of people in the chat want to know why you haven't brought up Daniel Cormier's name, Ben. Daniel Cormier doing it. Are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> zero, zero chance of that happening. Yeah. I don't, 
Um, I but, actually feel I feel bad. I didn't bring up Pendleton. I actually think he's. I, I don't think he will be getting it, but I think he's doing a good job at Oregon State, and I think he would be maybe in contention. I guess you'd say. Yeah, I think so too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Who if uh, if Coleman slides up? Who do you think the best are like the best person for the assistant job is? I mean, I th- I think Neil makes a lot of sense. Um, if he's not ready yeah. to leave. If he's what? So he's let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Christian. Do, and and maybe that's the dynamics of situations. Does Neil actually make sense? Because you know, when I think of a head coach, I think of someone who needs to do kind of the the business side of things and and uh, recruit, except you know, fundraise uh, X, Y, and Z, all this stuff that we know a head coach does. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like Neil, obviously, is doing a pretty good job of that at Little Rock. He's taken them from nothing to being a really solid program in in not all that many years. Um, you know, do you need two of those people, or is Coleman? Does he want to say, "Hey, Neil, you're better at that. You do that," and then Coleman's like, "Well, I want to be on the mat and in charge of running the practices and that type of stuff." Yeah, that's well, what I, I enjoy or that's what I excel at. I think thing. that's what we see a little bit at at, at Penn State, where I feel like sure. Cody handles a lot of the I won't say admin, but he's like logistics. You know, and maybe Kale takes on more. I, I, I don't think it's necessarily – I think we see that what you're describing more often than not, but I think there's examples sure. where it's not necessarily the case. I think I think Tom Ryan, Brian Smith are, like, the like perfect examples of, of what you, you're you laying out yes. there, Ben. But that may not be yeah. for everyone. That may not be what, what Coleman desires. I don't know. It's just my, my guess. I, I feel like Coleman – when I think of Coleman Scott, I think of like a room guy, a guy that wants to be around wrestling, teaching wrestling, coaching wrestling. That's what I think of. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know this to be untrue, but like I don't see him as a guy that's like super excited about the outside the wrestling room stuff of, you know, the, I mean, stuff that sounds terrible to you, like fundraising and networking and all admin, like. To me, Coleman feels like a, just a pure wrestling guy. And I think you'd be hard pressed yeah. to find any coach that's excited about that stuff, though, mm. at all. Well, is it their primary like? Okay, excited about maybe maybe not, but like uh, primary skill set. Yeah, ability like, to do it well. Yeah. yeah, like Sean, Tom, Brian, they do it really well. Yeah. Pat Pop does it really Dresser. well. Dresser, Dresser, notoriously does like it really. That? Yes, exactly, exactly. Hundred mm-hmm. um, percent. So that's what I mean. Who I mean, there's a lot of I mean, I guess that's the main person I've thought about. Um, yeah. Hey, another uh, good Oklahoma State alum mentioned in the chat was uh, who's doing a great job coaching is Kevin Ward. Yeah, he's doing a good job at Army. For I sure. don't think they would bring him back. Would not be my anticipation. But man, John Smith's coaching tree that's it's pretty impressive. Extremely impressive, impressive career. And yeah, I I think uh, I think given. Other factors, you you maybe take your time here, but I don't know. I initially was hearing Coleman, 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 and then got yeah. I, maybe Oklahoma State's going to look a little more outside the outside the nest, but more to come there. Either way, um, a lot of great options for Oklahoma State after coming off a you know really solid season where there was a lot of excitement, energy around a pretty young team. Mm-hmm. What was the last head position that opened up that was this desirable or big? Great question. Ooh. I, uh, mean, it, I mean, it's, well, there's just there's just not a lot that are this in all of wrestling. There's only a couple that are mm-hmm. that are this big. Um, but if we want to maybe bump it down just a, a notch, where it's like a top tier program. I mean, I think when you're on this level right now, you know, it's mm-hmm. like Oklahoma State, Iowa, Penn State, or like the legacy historical programs. But then. If you include, like, say, a Michigan, Ohio State, like Minnesota, those type of programs, which maybe they're just uh, one step below from like a, a legacy funding perspective, um, you know, Michigan, but mm-hmm. that didn't even really open up because Sean just got the job. Do you consider Cornell on the level? They would probably be on that you Michigan, should, Ohio yeah. State level, in my mind. Yeah. And yeah, I think Cornell would be yeah. on that level. Michigan. That was 2020? Yeah, summer of 2020. Wait. Or 2021. 21, 21. yeah. 21. 21, yeah. The Michigan mm-hmm. job did open up. They, like, interviewed other people, I think. I don't yeah. know. But Who? Who did they was, interview? I don't know. They didn't interview nobody. I think everyone really wanted Sean. 
I mean, I, this is, you know who you're talking to right now. <laughs> yeah. Did you just say Jim Harbaugh? Yeah, he put in for it. He's like, I'll do both. He's like, oh he's like, God. it's a winter sport. What's the problem? You know who we haven't <laughs> talked about yet? Um, that some people in the chat brought up is David Taylor. We talked about J Jordan Burroughs. David Taylor lives on a farm right now. Yeah. He could that bring true. He could bring honey straight he to bring Stillwater. honey. I don't know if he plans. You on don't know. Might after. not be ready for the climate. He might not be ready to, and he might not be ready to retire. He might not be ready to retire. Yeah. Listen, if he's, if he's David Taylor has lived in many climates. He lived in Ohio. Oh, I was, talking, I was talking about honey. I was talking about honey. Oh, honey can handle it. Don't worry about honey. <laughs> <laughs> Honey's fine. Honey's built for this. Um, uh, he's from, funny. David lived in Wyoming, so he's, he's ready for, for all climates. Uh, okay. Yeah. I advocated for David Taylor to be the Iowa head coach in like 2017 or like a uh, long time. Remember I wrote an article about how it'd be a great idea. Yeah. You wrote that, an article? That rumor continues. <laughs> yeah. No little blog article on uh, our AW website. That was a long time ago. Wow. Um, so, so for David, you know, I think at, at some point he will be a, a coveted, you know, head coaching prospect. But, you know, is he going to be done? in 2024 i don't know 2014 i wrote it 2014 my god that was a dude is yeah. there I, any scenario where david goes into an assistant coaching position before a head coaching position at the college level uh i won't never outside say, of penn state never say never but I, that sounds extremely unlikely to me and i feel like it would be man that's a tough spot for any head coach David, yeah. David Taylor's the assistant. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't want that guy as your assistant coach because, unless you're like the CEO type, where you're like, "Hey, I'm gonna go do some fundraising. I'll do some recruiting." David, you run, <laughs> you do everything else. Yeah, like at that take point, care of it, man. make him the head coach. At that um, point, yeah, yeah. 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 See so why not? That'd you know, one thing I think that some like old head coaches could could and or should do that that they never do because I feel like they retire a lot of them retire like I say a 55 where. I don't know. I guess that's older, but it's not. It's not old by any sense of the imagination. No. Um, you still have a lot of active years left. It's like they should demote themselves. Like say, "Hey, I don't want to be the head guy anymore. I'll take myself down to a you know second assistant or whatever, and I'll do X, Y, and Z. And we, I want to bring in this guy, and he's gonna be the head coach. And you know, I have a lot of faith in him. Blah blah blah. I th I think? think that on paper makes a lot of sense. I think in practice, it's really tough to say I'm the head coach for 25 years or whatever. All yeah. right, now I'm stepping down. You're in charge, Miss Ben Asker. And now you're the head yeah, coach. It's a power struggle. It, it is. You're always going to, there's going to be gravity towards for most to do it the way they had done it. Well, Roger Rain is doing, they announced. There you go. Well, for a year. Yeah. For a year. Yeah. That's one year. I mean, it's not a long-term like, yeah. Well, you have to be a mature, well-balanced individual. Uh, yeah. And I think, I think it's, well, it may be challenging. Uh, it's definitely feasible and it definitely, I don't know. Like, I think, I mean, I, that's what I'm gonna do with AWA when I'm 50 or my kids get out of school, I'll probably do it earlier than 55. I'm going to find someone else to run it. I'm gonna say, you run it. I'm going to come in when I want to come in. I'm going to work with some kids because I love coaching wrestling and you do it, yeah. you know, and will I advise them sometimes? Of course I will. But like, it's their thing now. AWA is in trouble, man. You're already already. No, no we're not. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm wise Ooh. enough to know when I'm going to step aside. Days are numbered. Someone else is going to take it and freaking run it through the moon. Crash Train isn't talking about uh, uh, about retirement. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. No, and then I would anticipate being in that position like forever till I'm nine. I'm be ninety in there just showing some moves and whatnot. Oh my gosh, they're gonna be like, oh gosh, I just. If Coach Ben tries to show you something, just just go with it and then let it, <laughs> just, just put him back in his chair. He's got a special chair he sits in and just tell him thanks. And then dude, just don't, well, that do old not old do it. Like a rocking chair, you know, and, hey, okay. hey, toughen up over there. Why are you crying? Knock it off. <laughs> I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> For real. I can see you having a cane. Yeah, I, that's so funny. Old Ben Askin is going to look so weird because you're going to have this old dude with no shoes on be like, Someone take care of this old man. He has no shoes. <laughs> At what point is it going to be medically 
unadvisable for you to walk around barefoot and you're a doctor no, no, it's great for you a, i ground i'm grounding all the time i'm grounding the, some of you guys never take your shoes off you're not grounded you're not connected to the earth i take my shoes off all day. i was just out this morning walking around barefoot being grounded i i went to the austin kite festival and did that yesterday so i take See? exception to that comment wow what yeah a be- what a beast he's just he wishes he could do it with the longevity but i'm saying at some point you're gonna be old old and you're not going to be able to be barefoot all the time. I, mean, I want to see not? those big orthopedic shoes. Oh, yeah. You'll need them for like balance or something. I don't know. No, you're crazy. Support. I'm, 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 I'm riding this one to the grave, Christian Piles. Okay. You can't, are you going to get buried barefoot? I always think like, hey, what if I get my, unfortunately, my grandpa was, had some like senility or uh, I don't remember. It wasn't exactly Alzheimer's, Dementia. but. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. I figure at that point when that's coming out, I'll just dig my own grave and, you know, finish it, fall in it, and, you know, have some of It's kind of hard to bury yourself alive. Wow. I'll 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 figure it out. (laughs) Yeah, you might start digging and be like, now why I got this dang hole? (laughs) Is this for a jacuzzi? (laughs) Next thing you know, you got a jacuzzi tub. Oh, yeah, a jacuzzi. Yeah. (laughs) Honey, I got a jacuzzi. Amy, I made a jacuzzi. All right. Oh, uh, you guys are hilarious. You guys want to move on? It's we've yeah. We got to talk about veto. We, we got were all just distracted. talking about jacuzzi. We just started talking jacuzzi. You're trying to move it. All right, fine. Let's talk about veto and 57 kg. Man, it's uh. I think this actually parlays well into um, Nomad's horrendous take that JD co-signed. Oh God, what about. was he talking about? Uh, I can't believe uh, oh, that. So bad. Yeah. Well, but so veto says i think vogar actually put it out hey the cut's too much he's coming off a big injury we're gonna focus on 61 and it's kind of the problem i've been discussing about 57 since last spring we have a huge issue because there's not actually you look at the bracket and the list of qualifiers you say oh wow but you don't what you don't what you don't say is like, well, half of these guys are going to be completely malnourished, emaciated, and have low energy and have no idea if they're going to be able to like compete close to the best we've seen them compete. So now we're just talking about the people that can make this weight in a healthy way. And I think Vito's a victim of that. He, we saw what he looked yeah. like at 57 kilograms. Everyone talks about final X, Thomas Gilman. No one talks about U23s after that and how – Frankly, poor he looked, and everyone said it was the cut, the cut, the cut. And you you turn the page on Vito's career after the U23s, what happens? He moves up, and he's incredible. He did have some losses, but the highest heights we've ever seen Vito wrestle at were at 61 kilograms, 133 pounds. So to me, this is all about the weight. It's really unfortunate. If this was at 133 pounds, we would see Vito wrestling this week, and he's not that He's not that guy. He's not that small. And so he can't do it in a healthy way. And I think, unfortunately, for wrestling, it's probably the best decision for Vito. Just, like, focus in on this. Don't do more damage. Don't set yourself further back and jeopardize uh, going back-to-back at 61. So it's a bummer, uh, but it's the reality when you don't have enough weight classes. I forgot about U23s. Yeah, everyone did. Yeah. Everyone he, did. He did not medal. D, D, Vito Arrujo DNP'd at U23. That's kind of wild, huh? That is wild. Nuts. And then the following year with yeah. world champ at 61. World champ senior level next year. Is he that much better? It, did Vito suddenly become the most ama- No, he got to wrestle at the right weight, weight classes. Weight classes matter. Weight classes matter. And Vito is a, a great example of which there are, unfortunately, a lot now. Zane Rutherford, James Green, Alec Pantelio are three guys at 65. It, it, how well is it going to go there for them? Thomas yes. Gilman probably should have been at 61 for a long time. He's held it, held it, held it. How is this going to look? We saw how it looked at Final X. We know he's huge, right? Dayton Fix, he's, he's big. He's big. 57. His last 57-kilogram world team was uh, 18 or 19. Long time ago. Not, not four, recently. Five or six years ago. He's yes. too big. He's a 61. So that's the yeah. reality of, of not having enough weight classes. And it is a bummer we won't see uh, Vito. Yeah. I, I hate I, That was a really bad take by Nomad, unfortunately. And six weight classes just isn't enough. There's 
people there's plenty of people that when they're six weight classes that are not the right size to wrestle in the weight classes so you get this type of situation this sucks um i mean i'm glad he's gonna wrestle in the uh non-olympic weight class world championships and it almost feels like they should just host a world championships even in the olympic year because like you know this is not our full field and hopefully we'd see vito win another world title Totally agree. Uh, I would love to see that. that's what they did in twenty one, and it was really cool. It mm-hmm. was in Oslo, Norway, which is a magical place, land of wonder. Um, yeah. Do you, do we want to talk about that? The the do you want to defend yourself, JD? Because I just I just took took uh, yeah shots. sure. Uh, there should be ten weight classes. It's Yay. terrible for the athletes competing that a good chunk of them don't get their right weight class. You really shouldn't go, you know, 15 to 20 pounds in between weight classes, especially at the lighter weights. But yes. to kind of defend what Nomad said that no buts. a lot of fans will secretly, whether they realize or not agree with, we get so many more sick matchups in deep brackets when there's only six weights we get so many extra matches that we would never get to see if there were 10 weights that you won't hear me complain about it as much as other people. There should be 10, but uh, I don't hate six as much because we get sick matches like potentially Jordan Burroughs versus Kyle Dake, Kyle Snyder versus Jaden Cox, Thomas Gilman versus Spencer Lee, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That- that is true, but that's the only pro, but it's enough of a pro for me that I will not complain as much as much mm. as a lot of people. And I'm not going to uh, come at people's throat to say that they're that they like six weight classes because yeah. <laughs> selfishly, I agree. I like seeing those cool matchups sucks for those guys, but it comes at my enjoyment. They're suffering. They're killing themselves to make weight. Wow. It comes out to my enjoyment. I think um, I think the negative outweighs the positive for me that we do. There are a couple Big scenarios time. where you get a few matches like Jordan and Kyle. But I still have questions about Jordan at 74. And now I talked to what? Coach Slay at, at last chance. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it sound like weights at not not even like doesn't even sound like of high concern. Like they feel really good about it. No, he could just be telling me that, but I don't I, did the impression I get from him was like, Oh, it's all good. there. not going to be a problem. 2021 didn't go well, but it'll be fine. Um, but I have questions about Jordan at, at 74 still like I, they changed the weight class on him, whether, whether we want to admit it or not, when they went from day before to two hours. Um, and Jade and Kyle, that is a good one, but, just not getting to see Zane, James Green, Alec Pantelio, Gilman, Dayton, Vito, the best guys wrestle at their best. I think that outweighs a lot of, of the positive. I do feel like Yes. I That's do, it right there. Yeah. And, and and that these guys have to go out and pretend that this is representative of their wrestling skill when we know it's just not gonna be. Um that's that's just really unfortunate to me because it's not really a reflection of who they are as wrestlers necessarily. It's like there's some science experiment now. Um, but I, I I think you could get it. You could. Oh, here's a question. I think, I think, oh. I think I know the answer. Eight weight classes. If you could, if you could do this right now, Ben and say, yes, world weight classes is eight forever, but Olympics is eight forever. I think that's a yes. You sign up for that? I think. I mean, uh, I actually think the ideal is is either nine or ten. I've laid them out a whole bunch of times. Um, He's got models. It, it's not terrible. Remember, so I think it was. Uh, I would go 55, no, 60. Uh, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. Which ninety is what? That's a hundred and maybe ninety in the heavyweight. So that would be nine. Hmm. I guess I, in that case, maybe you would say take out 55, start at 60. 60, um, 59, something there. I don't, 55 is nuts. 121 pounds. 
it's, it'd be a it's so crazy. I mean, we talked about this before, but historically, it's been significantly smaller. Um, and it feels like, yes, Americans are large for that, but obviously there are other countries that have smaller average sizes, uh, a lot of the Asian countries. Yeah, North Korea. So for, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for obvious reasons. Um, you know, but so it does feel weird, maybe bumping it all the way to 60 maybe feels a little too big. I don't, th- I think you get like 58, 59, so a little, a little more. I think that would go honestly a long way. I mean, I, Gre- Greco's first Olympic weight is 60. For some reason, um, I think we could do we that. We all know Greco athletes are different sizes. They are different sizes. They're different. It's a different pool of humans they're pulling from. Oh, guess what I have right now in my hands here, Christian Piles. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to find out. Average weight of uh, a person in the country. So the average weight of someone in America is ninety point six kilograms, and the you average weight of someone in South Korea or just male. This 90 is kilograms is the male. average and the average average weight of someone in south korea is 73 kilograms so that's like that's kind of a lot different sizes i'm smaller than the average i need to know the korean median. i need to know the median uh, i don't know what the median is the, so the average male the average female in america is 77 i mean this obviously includes probably a lot of obese people unfortunately <laughs> I think but it includes I think, all of them uh well yeah, yeah, yes, in fact, it does. <laughs> but even Russia is only seventy kilograms. Uh, you know, so you go to the, some of these other places, and there, India's average adult male is only uh, sixty-five kilograms, right? So you go to wow. other countries, and all of a sudden, that the smallest weight classes make a lot more sense. Uh, in America, maybe we're like just too large. Uh, you probably need to look at the average weight of a twenty to forty-year-old male in yeah. Some uh, countries. Actually, yeah, these do have. Sample populations of yeah. Hey, this was the Samp pops. Where are we looking at? <laughs> well, 20, 25 through sixty four. You're right. Uh, Eighteen through sixty four. Twenty five. Yeah, a lot of them like that age range. Okay, but so like for you, America, you... maybe fifty seven too small or almost too. But like Spencer's, uh, he's fine at that and weight he class, would be right? Fine up at fifty nine. You know, it's not like I don't think it'd be make or break. And I'm not. It's not just Americans. I. I I've been at Worlds. I see what the guys that are at the that are about to weigh in, what they're going through to to make it at the lightest weights. It's 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 really hard. These aren't guys that are just walking around. They're not in t-shirts. Um, <laughs> you know, they're they're well, duh. they're bundled up. I mean, they, it's it's a uh, it's extreme what they're going through. So, sure, I think kick it. And listen, that that conversation and, and why. We're saying, hey, if we if we went in this total dream scenario to eight weights, there's a concession somewhere. I think that mm-hmm. one of the concessions you make is let's bump up the lightest weight class. Screw those small guys. No, help <laughs> help them, help them. They got rid of sixty kilos. It was the most fire weight at the Olympics, and they got rid of it, and that's really sad to me. So I say, I I, I would agree. There should definitely be a weight class in there. It's, I mean, but I wouldn't hate it. If it was fifty seven, sixty one, sixty five. I mean, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What I think, I mean, maybe we should have exhausted this topic, but I want to say that if I had the power to press a button right now and say the future of the sport's uncertain, but I can lock in eight worlds, eight Olympics, I would press that button. I'm hitting that button. Eight worlds, eight Olympics. But then you deprive some guys, well, I think, potentially of their world weights, even. Yeah, I don't hate it. I'm like in the we middle on it. it. Like I, you, you could like spread I kinda out the weights like to be it. different. I'm not saying you get rid of two weight classes. Yeah. I'm saying you make it no. You are ones. ten to eight. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, classes. but I'm saying like just because one guy's weight class might disappear, another one adjacent to it might. Show Listen, up. eighty-six to ninety-two is kind of nuts. Who's no? No yeah, one. That's, that's no one is little. a tweener with that one. Yeah, you know that's a, like already boom. That's done. We bump up fifty-seven a little bit. Look at what we. But one of the most like Christian, one of the things that's most infuriating about the current system, and it's just my autistic self speaking, <laughs> but that the, the gaps are Autism so strange because they go sixty five, seventy five kilograms, seventy to seventy four, only four, right? And then you got a five, and then you got a seven. And it's like, what are we doing here? And then you go back to six kilogram jump, right? We're talking about the jump in kilograms between the weight yeah. classes. Like, what are we all over the place for here? This is so I strange. Like, I feel like you could. Almost get rid of 92 and get rid of 57, and you're almost like chilling. Make 61 60 or 59, yeah, something like that. Yeah, 
Make ninety seven ninety five. Boom. I just fixed it. Yeah. Wow. I kind of think I kind of think that's right because someone as big guys can cut a lot of weight. Like ninety seven is two thirteen. If you're two thirty, like it's probably not even all that hard for you to make ninety seven. And if you're above two thirty, like you're a fine sized heavyweight. You don't. Yeah. You just get a few pounds and bigger. I, you're two forty five now. Boom. There we go. I'm not advocating for getting rid of world's weights. I'm advocating for in this imaginary scenario. We yeah. Up, you're negotiating for more Olympic weights as well. So I, don't don't cherry pick me. I also think there's something to be said for every single year. It's the same thing. Like mm -hmm. instead of because worlds kind of by virtue of having more weights Kilo, that's of, crazy because sort of diminishes what you know it means to win a world title when there's more compared to the olympics now comparison to the olympics you kind of you don't lose is, someone asked a question that i feel like is important to address someone said does wrestling need the olympics why are we subjecting the sport and its athletes like this i agree well i think we do need the olympics yeah yeah do you want to see what how things change it for college programs when wrestling's not an yeah. olympic sport yeah you don't want that and that's why we have let's just make a professional league already damn it yeah we do we do need we need them right now we need this the distinction that is an olympic sport um i believe because then it's not it's not a professional sport and it's not an olympic sport yeah yeah not good and that's why we damn have it. six weights you, you don't think UWW would rather have 10 Olympic weights? No, they would, but they can't because of the IOC. You only get so many medals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why we have six weights. I also weights. think that like you just start to see, I don't know, if, they're, if wrestling just has a professional league, I don't know how many... I don't know. I'm just going to shut up. I don't have, I need to think out my opinion. I think we did it. I think, we, <laughs> I think it is now exhausted and we should move on. Um, <laughs> couple of things one um olympic seeds are supposed to come out today olympic trials what seeds. trial seeds thank you <laughs> olympic trial seeds uh so keep your eye out for those actually i'm gonna go to the mat.com right now which means we'll basically have brackets all right i yeah. got my i got my uh i got what i want okay if, we, good. if you make me have eight weights i got it all right i was working on it over here <laughs> um, doing math <laughs> so well, I was just kind of, I was playing with the ones that I, I was playing with, which way do I want to go? Here's right. what I want to go. go. Four in the beginning, 58, so I'll bump it up one kilogram for you, Christian. Two pounds. 58, 2 .2. 62, 66, 70, 75, 80, 80 to 90, 90 to heavyweight. That's where I want, if, if we're only, if you're only giving me eight. That's a big jump. I'd prefer nine. All right, that, that's what stands out to me. Is there, Could we get it? Well, you're not giving me nine. You're not. I would. So if if I if you give me nine, I'm gonna add. You know, um, I would I would take the gap down. Did you go so seventy five like, to eighty five? I went no on seventy five to eighty. So that would be one sixty five. Can we go seventy five to eighty two and then to ninety five? How about that? Ooh, now that's possible. That's what I like. So so seventy five is one sixty five. Eighty two would be one eighty. Ish probably maybe Ish. maybe eighty three. That's almost no, like that's good. Way. 15 pounds is enough. That, that's plenty. Yeah. Yeah. I would ideally, I mean, so in this, I would take what, you know, if you give me one more weight class, Christian, nine, I think that's perfect because then I think you go like, you know, 80, 81, 75, 81, like 87, 94, 95, something like that, then heavyweight. Copy. I right, think nine is a perfect amount of weight classes. Real quick, someone brought up that Olympic medals are expensive. What do we think is more expensive, an Olympic medal or a fourth place NCAA Listen, trophy? Listen, <laughs> this is so dumb. This is so freaking dumb. Oh, my God. I mean, this is why everyone hates government and bureaucracies. Like, because they go to these people who have these uh, abnormally priced things. Like, the damn trophy doesn't cost $40,000. Find someone to do it cheaper. This is really simple. Hmm. Metal doesn't cost that much. Find someone to do it cheap. I don't know. I think they just cost forty thousand dollars. I just really wanted to make that joke. That's a funny joke. You, you, you stop. All right. You want to talk about Bo Nickel fought? Yeah. Oh my. Did okay. you watch the whole card, Christian? Thing? No. I you know what I did? I went. I went. I watched the Ga Gagey Holloway. It was great. Oh my god. Then Amazing. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go sit in the hot tub for a little bit. I sat in the hot tub and for a while, and I was really tired. And I came back in, and I hadn't even started the girls' fight. And I said, I, I ain't gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm going to sleep. Bro, I beat you. I can't believe you yeah. said I did it. 
I was, I, that girl's flight started so late. There was a big gap there. I felt so. Yeah. I, uh, if, if for those of you who've been listening, you know, I can't stay up late hardly ever. And this was a true Marvel because I did this from my own home where I could have easily just walked upstairs. But every fight like gave me a little more energy to make it through. And then, well, then, <laughs> then I, here's what happened. I made it to the girls fight and then I kept thinking Zhang's going to put this girl out. So I'm like, this is going to be a quick one. So we're going to get, so we're going to, we're going to get to the are. next one. And then it freaking went five rounds, but it was still an exciting fight. And then I was like, yeah. all right, let's go. Um, and stayed. I mean, every fight was amazing. I mean, incredible. I mean, no one's talking about the Armin Oliveira fight. That was amazing. That fight. was awesome. Great was fight. Really fight. Um, uh, but let's talk about Bo because he had, uh, yeah. He had another, you know, dominant win, a second round finish of submission. And he was kind of catching a little bit of flack from UFC fans at the press conference. Some boos are getting thrown out there. And then he double thumbs down himself after winning, kind of booed himself. And I have a, a an opinion about it, but I, I think I'd like to hear Ben's, Ben's thoughts on Bo's performance. Well, I know what my opinion is. It's that... Yeah. Um, that he obviously like they he wanted a fast finish because there's been so much hype and that's what helps keep the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't get that, but dude, it's it's hard. It's really hard. I had plenty of those fights where the other guy he's good. It's not like he's a bum. Like he, now both starting to fight like guys who are they're solid, and so like positionally on top he can dominate and control them. But the guy is good enough to where you can't get a finish. Um, you know where it's really challenging. And I think I think the thing that I would have advised him. And cause this is where I was in, in earlier in my career is, is he should have probably struck him more in the first round when he wasn't, cause he was really spending a lot of time looking for a submission and you know, he had a total top control. So he could have kind of opened up, hit him more. And then that's what makes the finishes come a little bit easier because if you're just really strictly relying on the finish and, and if you think about it in wrestling terms, it's like in wrestling, what if the person on the bottom was allowed to just like do like this, mm -hmm. like it would be so hard to pin them. You know, and then you get frustrated because you can't pin them, but you know you're way better than them. But because they're allowed to do like this and do nothing, they turtle up if you're it, just listening, yeah, it's just turtling up. It makes it impossible to pin them. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I think. He should have to uh, continue dominance, but a little showmanship, taking a page out of the Ben Askren book, rode the bull on him <laughs> while he was he on top, but couldn't sure. get the submission. That's how you <laughs> keep the people that. talking, even when you're. Uh, it's maybe not as exciting. Yeah, I yeah. thought he, they. Uh, so, do you the people that are that are booing Bo feel like he's getting uh, treatment that he yeah. hasn't deserved, right? That he doesn't deserve to be on the main card and this, that, That's and the true. other. And uh, understand that perspective, but also understand when you boo Bo, do you think Bo is telling Dana White, "I'm I'm a main card guy for UFC 300"? This is. The UFC's choice. This is their determination. They are one. Bo has no leverage to say. Christian, Christian, me. Christian, hold on. You're being way too reasonable. These fans, they don't want your reason. They don't want your logic. Okay. They don't care about this. Well, let me let me give it to our, our the wrestling <laughs> fans that are listening. Maybe want to hear it. Uh, th this is a smarter crowd. The FRL crowd, yeah, a little smarter than. Well, I'm talking to them. The UFC. So for okay, the, the the UFC yahoos, they. Bo is not calling any shots here, right? I think that's very obvious. And if you look at the card, look at the main event card, that fight stands out so much compared to those how awesome those other matchups were. And then you have yeah. this guy, Bo Nickel, versus a total unknown commodity, essentially. It's someone that, from the moment that fight is signed, is a minus 2,000 favorite. This is not a fight. Is it that low? It, I don't think it was that low, actually. But I could be wrong. Well, I mean, I don't know. Every interview I heard it, they with Bo this week, they said minus two thousand to minus three thousand. I think it was minus twelve hundred. Okay. When, once they stepped on. So the the moment they booked this fight, they said this is not a competitive fight. This is not a fight that people want to see. They all this is all about Bo. And so think about that. Like like Ben was saying, there's only one way. You can't just win dominantly like Bo did. The only yeah. win for you in that scenario, it's kind of it was a no win position. Yeah. You have to that get true. a highlight oh. knockout. That's basically the only thing that is going to get that, that can reach the bar. So the bar's set way too high as is. So 
Bo should be take it easy on himself and the fans. You know, yeah. they can they can root for whoever they want. They can not like Bo Nickel. That's mm-hmm. fine. But I'm just saying, I think the reasons they don't like him don't actually make sense. Is that I thought they were maybe booing because the casual UFC fan doesn't want a really good wrestler to come in and just wrestle people to death no, because the casual. But that's UFC not been Bo. That's not been Bo throughout his his yeah. career. Um, no, I think I think Christian. I think you're right. I think people felt like. I mean, even especially when you look at, and I'm gonna pull it up to make. I mean, Aljamain Sterling uh, was on the prelims. Yeah, on, that's just what I say. Like the even the undercard is like ridiculously good with multiple UFC champs. Yuri Prohaska and Brackett, which is a great fight. Crazy, that was a crazy former fight. UFC champ. Holly Holm, former UFC champ. Aljo, former UFC champ. Garbrandt. I mean, you had a lot Garbrandt of. Garbrandt was on the early prelims. Yeah, former UFC champ. So you have all these people who are really, really uh, accomplished. And, you know, this is, but this is obviously something that the UFC does a lot with the undercards is they want to make a few really, really exciting, compelling fights. So you tune into the undercard. Um, and then obviously they feel like they're going to convert people to buy the pay per view, right? That's a prime tactic is the last two fights on the undercard are generally ones that they think will draw people in. And in that time, they can then convert more than they would have if they were not watching the prelims. Yeah. I'll tell you yeah. what was confusing for me a little bit is I, I don't know, maybe you guys didn't think this also, but I thought Bo was maybe going to go heel in the UFC. Um, he kind of should have. But then he stood up, he booed himself. It's kind of like the humble like wrestling culture kind of thing. And then he yeah. tells everyone, you're all going to love me. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't, don't know. I just wasn't. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not even we're talking about. But I don't no. know if you guys. I think it would have been. I think it would have been a great heel turn, Tyler. I think you felt it. I think it would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he felt. I I think you're maybe reading into that because of what he did with Jordan. Like, are right, is this some sort of a change? Like, but I don't think he viewed that as. I think he just views he was. He's right there that Jordan was out of bounds and wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I wasn't even. I, know, I wasn't even thinking, thinking about thinking that, that Christian. Before, oh, okay. Before the Jordan thing, I was yeah. thinking Bo might might do that. Yeah, he still could, but yeah, I'd, I, it does seem outside his. Uh, he seems conflicted. I feel like he, part of him wants to go heal, but part of him also yes. really enjoys being loved. Yeah, well, that's uh, yeah. You got it. Well, and I, I, yeah, and I think well, the other thing I think Tyler, I think he legitimately is just a a, a good person, right? Yeah. Um, and sometimes especially wrestling people and especially young people, which Bo's not super young anymore, but they have a hard time considering, and I'll give you the number one um, person who's ever done this. Uh, they have a hard time separating like character from real life. Yeah. And they, they think it's all hundred percent the same, but like Chael Sonnen, oh, for man, example, yeah. I mean, so, he just got inducted to the hall of fame for that. Uh, the, it's like a, a hall of fame fight, the Silva and Sonnen won, but he was able to create such a great character. Right. And and if you've been around Chael off of camera, you know he's significantly different than he is on camera. Right. So he created a character who played a part and that made him very, very popular and famous. Yeah. Uh no yeah, yeah no one can do it like that though. That yeah, will, he was that, so good. That will never be rep so good. That will never be replicated. No one's even yeah. gotten close. Well, the Covington character might be better. No. Oh my Ew. god. Ew. Are you kidding you me? Stop it. Not in Wash terms of liking, but in terms so... of eh, No, that's Colby's intrigued. actual no, character. Speaking no, of, speaking yeah, of that's Chale. who Colby is. That's yeah. the problem. Speaking of speaking of Chael, I did watch um or I listened to while I was driving the other day. Chael did a video on the Bone Nickel Jordan Burroughs thing. And he was like, Look, I'm not saying I don't even want to talk about whether I like what my thoughts are on between them. He was like, But I did hear a part of Bo that I want him to explore more. <laughs> like <he> basically <laughs> It's like, I want to hear when Bo feels a certain way that other people might not agree with. I want him to let that out more. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of funny hearing Chael's perspective yeah. on, on it. He kind of, Chael yeah. felt kind of like us. Like, we don't understand the, what the contention was for Bo towards Jordan. Like, he acknowledged that. But he but he was like, but he was like, but I like that he said it anyway. I love that he said it. <laughs> yeah. Explore that more. It's so funny. That was a funny way to put it. So, yeah, Bo... Um, he, he, I think in his post match, he's, he's very much pumping his own brakes a little bit. He's like, he's not like calling for title shots or anything like that. He's like in 10, 12 fights, I'll be fighting for the, he's like, I've had six fights. Let me get to 10 or 12 before, you know, if I'm still fighting these guys at my 10th fight. Okay. But right now I'm still brand new in this. So then why'd he boo himself? Well, yeah, cause I think he's got a standard. He, he said, well, because he 
has a it's ridiculous. Frust- bro, it's frustrating when you know you're better than someone and you can't finish them. It's freaking annoying. Well, I, but he I'll did tell you the other him. thing. But but it, yeah, he did finish him. It took him a while. Uh, it, the thing that is that is the most infuriating. I'll tell you this because I experienced it so many times. It's it, it's 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 so annoying. So if the guy on the bottom would actually fight back more, you'd have a much higher likelihood of finishing, right? Because they're taking a chance. But a lot of times the guy at the bottom just clams up and tries to survive, right? And but then the guy on top is the one getting booed, and people put all the onus on them. It's like, no, guys, he's not doing anything. Yeah, like that's why it's so freaking hard. And in yeah. wrestling, wrestling fans, I mean, we're a little smarter. We haven't figured out if the bottom guy's going like this on bottom. You know, well, the top guy can't do anything. Yeah, because the bottom guy's not doing anything, right? Yeah. And in wrestling, we have stalling, but in fighting, you don't have that. So when the when the bottom guy is simply trying to survive and it's making it very 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 difficult for the top person to finish, then the top person gets all the hate, which is that's frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I I feel that too. I wonder how much of it is different in wrestling too. Like Bo, if, okay, think about this. If Bo, think about the skill discrepancy Bo had with Cody Brundage in that match. Whatever it is in fighting, yes. it, there's uh-huh. a there's a chasm between those two. If you take that chasm and, and you put Bo on the wrestling match with someone who is that much worse than him in wrestling, he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. He can pin him well, in almost any form or fashion he'd like. Not so, if the other person is allowed to stall however they want. But in wrestling, you are not allowed to stall. They will call if you. That's were, what I'm saying. Okay, because of that rule. So that's that. so the point I'm making yeah. is that in wrestling he would not have to experience probably the level of frustration he was against someone that much worse than him because we we know this because we watched his entire career and everyone that was not on the level with Bo, he destroyed them, annihilated them, pinned them um, almost immediately. So I think that also is like in a from a competitor standpoint, normally when I'm this much better than someone, I do whatever I want yes. and I put them away whenever yes. I want. But in fighting, yeah. it's not really yeah. that way. And so I think that is why he was probably a little frustrated because so, in wrestling, when you're that much better, it goes differently. See, to me, I just yeah. watched a guy dominate another guy. Like, I don't know. It just didn't seem that – I watched him dominate that guy. Yeah. Were there a couple flurries where, like, maybe, like, he w- it looked weird? But, like, he, the guy never hit Bo super hard. He never got on top of Bo. No, like, I agree. I, I don't think that it was a performance to be disappointed in. Was it not the most exciting yeah, I agree. fight ever? It wasn't, but like, I don't know, dude. I think he should go easier on himself. If you're a wrestling purist, yes. you should not want stalling. Okay. You should not want stalling. <laughs> I'm just saying, because yes. that, that that's, that's like a, a strategy. That's a game plan. <laughs> Stop. Less entertaining, but if somebody can stall their way to victory, you should just be better at wrestling. You should this be able to This guy wants down Greg Warren stall cam. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Kale agrees with me. <laughs> he said it this preseason. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, and that's one where you can't talk, and this is kind of like, you can't talk the audience in anything. So Christian, you, you were saying like, well, Bo Nickel didn't put himself in that spot. Dana put him in that spot. And that's yeah. where, you know, you can't reason with the audience, right? So he should have just said something like, listen, guys, you could boot me all, my, all I want. I'm here to win titles. I'm going to go take people down and beat them up. And despite your booing, I'm going to have a belt within 12 to 18 months. Have a great night. Kiss my butt. I feel like he's not. That's probably where I would have went with it. Yeah, I wonder how many months it will be before he can. Well, he said he wants a whole bunch of fights, which even if that's what even <laughs> this is a, I'm giving Bo advice here now. If Even if that's what he wanted, he shouldn't have said that publicly. Like he should have said, um, I'm good enough to beat the champ right now. You think that guy can stop my takedowns? He can't stop my takedowns, and he sure as shit can't get me off the top of him. So Dang. how's he gonna beat me? He said, "I know, I know, they're not giving me a shot now. That's not my call, right?" So you know, turn it around, turn it the other way. Not my call. They can't get. I can't get a tell shot right now. If, if we were putting a tournament bracket, and I had him in the finals, this would not be a problem. I would take care of him, no problem. Uh, but I know they're gonna make me wait. So whatever. That's not my call. But put me in there right now. This guy's done. Talk that trash. Yeah. So you keep your. That's probably what I would have said for Bo. So good job, Bo. Should have um, hit the crowd with the Mike Tyson quote. I'm not gonna say it, but. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he was nervous too, though. If he felt because one thing he said in his interview sure. was, 
yeah, this guy's way more confident than any of the other guys I fought. So I wonder if maybe part of him is like, I don't know if I am ready to fight the the top of the. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But even if you think that, you can't say that. Yeah, that's not. You don't want to say that. I'm and sure. that's where you got to separate like character, character from reality. Yeah. Type thing. Yeah. Okay, good job, Bo, and uh, to many more wins in dominant fashion. Can we talk about the fact that Tyler ended last show in the most? Oh my God, awkward this is. Game? I was gonna. Okay, let me say this. This something. is so. Ben, I am, ben I'm, I need you locked in here. I, uh -oh, I know you're doing uh -oh. something. I need I, you locked in right now. I have the show doc in front of me right now, and in bold letters it says Tyler made the end of the show so awkward last last week. Let's ridicule him. <laughs> I don't know well, who put. Well, I don't remember. What did he do? Did, we finished the Tom Ryan interview, and Tyler goes, "Guys, OJ Simpson died." <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't remember. I was like, I don't, in my defense, I thought that we had. I didn't know that Tom was going to stay on the show. I thought that after he said bye, he was going to hang up. And then, so I thought it was just going to be us. And then I was like, OJ Simpson died. And then Tom was like, "Oh my God, how?" <laughs> Yeah, but I just thought that everyone in the chat was talking about it, and I felt like it, it had just happened. We had to talk about it. Honestly. No, I'm gl I'm glad you did. I just I just want to ridicule you more than anything. But it was so because it was one of those things. It's like, how do you respond to that? What do you say when OJ Simpson died? It's a lot easier when it's. What like, did you say, Christian? What did you say? Could I know? I don't think I said. I, Christian, you, you were or, on the show. So. Eddie had a great joke. He's just like Christian's hero. <laughs> <laughs> Christian was speechless. His hero yeah, I was, just died. Yeah, I mean that was that was tough for me. Um, oh my God. no, he's not, not a, not a good guy. Um, better football player than person. Probably. Probably. 2003 well, he yards. Was, he was not guilty. So, well, he was guilty ben. of other things. He did go to prison. Uh, so. You don't know. Ben, <laughs> have you seen the documentary? <laughs> no, I don't watch that stuff. Come on. You don't watch documentaries? No, I hate documentaries. <laughs> what are you doing? What kind of I kind of respect that? He loves documentaries. I, I, He's not no, telling I the truth. I love documentaries. I don't want to watch an OJ Simpson documentary. I'm not oh. trying to learn how to murder people. Jeez, please, <laughs> well, Christian. it's not a it's not an instructional. It's Hit not a tutorial. Well it's not a high it's <laughs> not a how to. No, uh, it's it's basically about how uh he super did it and he definitely murdered those people. Um it's really good. You should watch it. It's one it's definitely one of the best documentaries ever made. Made in America. Okay. What, I, What's it called? Is that the FX or the ESPN Made, one? ESPN. Made in America. It was a good FX one, too. Yeah, that, but that was like oh, a you know what? That kind I of sounds the, familiar now. I watched the Cuba Gooding Jr. recreation. Who's the FX? Recreation. Mm -hmm. what, what, recreation? Shut up. No, it's recreation. Whatever. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's enough OJ talk. That was um, the ultimate news dump. Ta the, yeah, ultimate you want to talk dump. about the conversation with Tom Ryan? No, I don't think we. I think Not it's really. probably exhausted itself. Okay. Um, yes. I'm over it. Uh, um, done with it. You know. Well, then we can move on to questions. Let's do that. Um, this is an easy one. With new colleges being added to the Big Ten, will we see any new wrestling teams? Are there any Big Ten teams without wrestling? No. No, but there hopefully will be. There's, hopefully, there's not less. Uh, can Ben give us a John Smith impression of the Hamity transfer? Well, he's not. He's done. He doesn't have to worry about no, it. No, but he brought him in. That was his like last act. Last thing. Um, thing. Hmm, he probably said, "Let me think." What would John Smith would have said? He said, "Well, well, we got a Lesnick over the hump, and he beat Hamidi. But I think if I get a year to work with Hamidi, he, he got that good little single, poop, poop, boom, right there. <laughs> I think he's gonna get a lot more takedowns and finish a little higher in the podium. There you go. Higher than oh, not placing." Um, keep, yo, know, you keep it going. I'm, I'm still looking. I haven't, I'm, well, these, these two are the same and I, I have a great argument for this. Cause I think some people, uh, some people are just, uh, very illogical when it comes to this. Um, so it says one says thoughts on undersized wrestlers redoing eighth grade. And the other one says, ben, what are Ben's thoughts on young wrestlers skipping a year in school to get an edge? I think he means holding back a year, not skipping. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Um, no, I think so he does mean skip a year from the guys who are so good already that as sophomores. Well, we've never I seen it. I don't. And, and you don't get an edge. Well, we talked about it before. Like skip. You like, don't get an edge though. Yeah, there's no edge. They should reclass it. We talked mean, about the really, really, really about, good one. We talked about how like you might want to just take advantage of the years you have while you have them. 
gay. What do we? Know, yeah, maybe, maybe. that's just good life advice, Tyler. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but you know the, the argument that I made um, was a lot of these kids. So I'll just in like birth year terms because that's how USA Wrestling classifies people. Um, generally, eighth graders are either 14U, second year, right? So in, in this year, it would have been a 2010 birth year, or they're 15U, which is the younger year of the 16U division, which is a 2009 birth year. And so uh, I have advised some kids to stay back, but they're they're the 2010 birth year, right? And so if I said, well, if some people are the older, the 15U birth year, and some kids are the 14U birth year, now the 15U birth year may have held back earlier they just started school late or whatever they whatever the case was to be where they're already older for their grade so if a 14 u birth year holds back and they become a 15 year 15 u birth year where people already are they're just becoming the same age as the kids who are already older for their grade what is the issue with that and no one can provide me a good answer because there is no good answer there that is not cheating that is just fine everyone's the same age what's the problem here no problem yeah hold them back so yes um we got a lot of olympic trials freestyle related stuff this Ooh. one is who which wrestler do you foresee making a molinaro-esque unforeseen run to the oh. olympics i feel like that was so that was that was so unexpected i don't think we're ever gonna i don't say ever i think there's no way we would see something like that on every Olympic trials. Yeah. I mean, he had, Does that makes sense. He had kind of lost to all those guys and then he just put it all yeah. together. Yes. Um, he'd always been you know, tough out, tough guy, hard to beat. And then yes. he was a different person from that point on, um, through the, through the world cup, through the Olympics. He was, yes, he was super. Um, I don't know. I mean, there, I think we'll say we'll, once we see the brackets, we'll be able to say, "Hey, this who who would be the a Molinero type of guy, right? Who's a nine but, or so seed that you could yeah. see?" I mean, at fifty-seven, I don't know if one of these high schools are just that that kid. You know, I wouldn't rule them out. But yeah, that would be one. What's up? But like, no one, not no one was picking Molinaro. That's no. the thing is like, if you could even see a hope of a possibility, then that's not, that ain't the person. Cause yeah. there was nobody picking Frank Molinaro in that bracket. He beat, he beat Steber and Metcalf or Metcalf and Steber. He went Metcalf, yes. then Steber. Then Pico. Yes. I think for a yes. comparison to Molinaro too, you'd have to, you couldn't pick a high schooler. I feel like you'd have to pick a guy who'd yeah. been around for a while who you're like, well, yes. I would not foresee Fair. that happening. Honestly, Zane Richards is kind of a Frank Molinaro. Except he made the team last no, year. He already no, he made the no, team. No, no, no. no. La last year. Oh, he, last year? Yeah. Yeah. Well, last year he was. Absolutely. Molinaro. Absolutely. No one well, gave him a shot at the ninth. open. And no, I mean, yeah, I mean, he'd have been close to ninth. He was. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He wasn't beating the. Uh, I mean, he had never. He had lost to Soriano multiple times. He'd have been back I, there. I believe he was the one seed at the U.S. Open. Yeah, but I think he probably would have been. <laughs> 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 I think he would have oh, been. roasted Christian Pyle. I don't know why. Ah, uh, fifty-seven. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not a good example. I think in perception, yeah. though. Yeah. No, I, uh, I actually, I kind of like that. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's because those sixty-one guys were up. Yeah, sixty-one. They were still up, and yeah, fifty-seven is not a deep field as we've been talking about. But now it'll be deep, sort of. Um, Olympics. people want to kind of bring up. So who has the best hit list ever as a high schooler? Jackson Bo both be NCAA champs. Is anyone that has ever had a better hit list? I believe Henry won the U.S. Open as a high schooler. I've heard stories of Cola and others. Did you Steber guys. Steber took third, maybe. He made the high school. No, he tripled it, but he made the semis. Oh, really? In the Open. Okay. Um, hmm. He beat. Did he beat? Beat someone really good. Someone really know. good. I think he lost to Angel, but beat like a Simmons or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was. Logan was on the on the level as a high school junior, um, mm -hmm. for sure. Who else? I mean, Dayton was pretty close as a high schooler. Who was? I mean, Dayton as a sophomore in high school, he beat Darian Cruz, who was an All American. He beat Ronnie Bresser. He beat Stevan. Um, all those guys were college wrestlers. Yes. Um, Aaron Pico. 
Pico beat Zane routine. Pico, he, yeah. Pico was high school yep. age, but I don't know when Bro, he, he graduated high school, technically. Pico beat Zane like seven times or something. Yeah. Which huh. is crazy thing what Zane became. To make the finals, he beat Jordan Oliver. Yeah. I remember Pico beat McKenna so bad that I thought McKenna was terrible for like three years because of what Pico <laughs> <did>. <laughs> That's such a funny line. <laughs> Oh my for gosh. real do you remember it was a fargo final i think yeah yeah he just smashed him <laughs> yeah he was insane yeah. that's such a funny way to put it <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad. i thought he was bad yeah it took me a while to think like damn mckenna's actually pretty good <laughs> it is funny when you watch like one match from a guy and that's yeah. your like impression Frame of, of them yeah, yeah like, has i mean i don't know if you can consider it molinaro-esque because He's like you've seen the flashes with McKenna. I'm mean, not that you didn't see him with Frank, but like he, if he won Olympic trials, it wouldn't be that much of a shock to me. I mean, he's been in tri Olympic trials finals. He's been in uh, Final yeah. X multiple times. He's, Beat Yanni in the past twelve months. Um, yeah, he he would not yeah. be a, a Molinero type of guy. But he'll be way. seated pretty low. He, I yeah, say. be like the eight or That's something true. like that. That's close to nine. Seven. Yeah, you're you're right. <laughs> You're right. But still, again, it, it, it's not on the level yeah, of Frank because yeah. we've it's seen him beat be these shot. top guys. He's been right there knocking at the door for the past four years. I, he was in the finals in 2021. I'm not also super familiar with Frank's freestyle career prior to the Olympics. It was. Olympic trials. Yeah. I was, was young. He and he never had those flashes where he was beating those best guys. He was kind of like a step down for a while. And then, you know, to Christian's point, once he did that, it kind of like turned and he was like better forever after that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This says Christian might hate this because he loves the US, USA process, but only change. I, this is what this tweeter says. I only change I would make to Olympic trials process is you have to compete at the weight three times within the year prior to the trial prior to the trials. I think showing you mm -hmm. can make the weight and compete more than at trials is needed less flops at world and then there was a follow-up that said for world team trials get rid of final x i hate to say it because it's such a great event but having months to prepare for one guy does not translate to worlds uh, that wrong can i smash this guy can i smash him you smash Christian? i'll re-smash i'll smash his remain <laughs> this guy okay who flops at worlds uh there's been very few of those instances final x is freaking awesome great event and he said that he said that uh, in his tweet Okay, that's fair. Smash but him. then also he said it doesn't translate at Worlds, but it's like our Worlds teams recently have been more competitive than I don't say, almost at any point in history. If you wanted to counter that, and I agree with you, Final X is, I like the process with Final X, but Zane Richards and Chance Marsteller go and you can don't cherry win a pick the yeah an that's anecdotal. Cherry picking, uh so here's what i'll say one to say that the olympic trials process is better because it more likely simulates worlds is really super wrong when you consider the guys that are sitting out like it's never yes. it's never more different from worlds and olympics than when you have a guy that gets to watch an entire challenge tournament and just face the winner whoever surfaces from there. So there's, it never is more different. It's more balanced and you actually get a, probably a better representation of who's the better wrestler at final X. And both of those, both of those entities have navigated a field that is a status all itself all on its own. Right. The one guy yeah. sitting out has navigated a world's field that shows they are world level and to navigate the trials process in yeah. America is a status all its own. So if you win the U.S. Open in America, that that's you're running a, a world's like gauntlet, and if you're a world's medalist, you run a. So that's why I think Final X is great because both have to run a gauntlet at some point, and then they meet fresh. And it's not months; yeah. it's weeks. Yeah. You don't get months. Um, and so I think I think honestly, it would be so awesome. I think it would be great for honestly. Olympic trials, if they move to a final X process, think of all the, think of all the, what NBC could do with that. If they had a, if they had interest in it, if you, if you have the matchup set, cause right now they're like, they probably love to, you know, if, if they had interest in it, which I don't know, 
you would love to pour a lot of energy into Jordan Burroughs versus Kyle Dake right now and Jane Cox versus it, and, and, and the, the 76 kilogram girls, right? Yeah. But you can't because you have no idea who's going to merge because of the beauty of, of how great this event's going to be. It makes it so you can't really promote it. You can just talk about the hypothetical and then you have hours to create the hype that could be created for weeks in advance. So I think it would yes. be great if USA, USOC, whoever the decision makers are moved, had a trials, pro, a, a challenge tournament, set the, set the, um, finals, final wrestle off and do them later. Yep. I think that would be incredible. And I think it would be more even it's, I mean, K Kyle Dake for all, you know, his complaint, it, it was, it is true that it is a, a real advantage. If you sit out while the other guy does a tournament, that is really, really tough to do. And so you can have the best of both worlds, I feel, with the final X type of process. And I wish we had it for the Olympic trials because I think yes. it's a win across the board for the athletes and for the fans. Now, Agreed. do you think athletes should have to make weight two days in a row a la World Championship or Olympics? But, uh, oh, for final X, because they do for they do for this. For, for Olympic trials, so that's more of a closer simulation in terms of making the weight it's a I, i'm not another as, way in down the it road it is kind of a thing well it here's what i'll say thing. about it um since it is still it's a two-hour way in no matter how you slice it so if you're wrestling in two hours it's going to reveal itself if you if the weight is not for you yeah, and doesn't work for you it's going to have revealed itself in a couple it'll have revealed itself in the qualifiers which could be two days yep, that's true you could make the qualifiers two days and worlds is two days so you could say, no, they've, they've passed that they are this size. They're the right size. Yep. So I think that's one way you can get around. And at two hours, we saw it, we saw it with Gilman. It did, two hour way in, he was not right. Uh, uh, he did not wrestle like we've seen him wrestle. And yes, everyone believes that that was the weight. So it'll, it'll reveal itself if you're not the right weight. All right. Good question. For the record, I... Agree with you guys. I just like to ask questions that'll queue up a Christian monologue sometimes. Oh, well, thank you. Um, uh -huh. uh, all right. You guys want a hypothetical question or a serious question? Serious. We're serious people. Which big names do you predict will retire if they don't make the Olympic team? Ooh. Well, Jordan said he uh, will. Um, Jordan. So I'll say him. <sighs> I don't think, um, you know, maybe that would, uh, if Adeline doesn't make the team, it feels like Don Bradley, she, she Tom Bradley. I don't know. I, I, he's got Vince Carter meme. I got one more in me. Um, hmm. well, Gilman, he, I don't think he'll take his shoes off. You just think yeah. because he's not that type of guy. I just think he's not that. Yeah. I think he'll, he'll he doesn't uh, like the spotlight or that just feels like, uh, like he can't allow himself to even think about that before competing in this event. Yeah, and I uh, just it's just, I just it's not his personality in my opinion. Um, Someone wants JD to set the odds on over under number of shoes left on the mat. A number of shoes or sh but then you got to include Greco and and it's uh, that gets tough because I'm not so in tune with that. I don't that's know why we that's why they asked JD to do it so none of us have to worry about it. Uh, I would have to think about it longer for everything but just men's freestyle it would have to be only something like one and a half or two and a half that's what i'm thinking i don't think it'll be a bunch yeah like three i would be surprised if it's three it's normally only one or two yeah and then like i don't know some guys might not consider themselves worthy of it if that's the right word yeah that's, so that's, that's how fair. some people i just lost and i don't want to make the match of you know whatever yeah, make it about all, about all, me. all the humility that we know wrestlers possess. It's not necessarily yes. people would like to show their appreciation for a great career. Um, yes, and sometimes you don't Agreed. get that opportunity. The guys who take their shoes off, I never paid this close attention. Do they walk off the mat and then do they have to like sprint over and grab the shoes again? Oh, a coach will coach get or a referee. Well, James or, Green <laughs> anymore? No, because like he oh said, he's going seventy. He said his whole plan was like it's like not really about the Olympics. It's about yeah the next squad at yes. seventy. So he right definitely said that he feeling like a new man. I think I think the the worst thing these kids they they'll ask for every stitch of clothing you got. <laughs> get gotta get you. Let me get your single. Let me get you. I, yeah. the audacity these kids have. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let me get your. I I don't like it. I think it's off putting. It's like 
Would yeah. you guys relax? How would you? Then as a competitor, you have to be like, I need it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Awkward. Hey, Jose Altuve, give me your glove. <laughs> give me your, like what? Just like maybe have a conversation with him. It's, it's all. It's very like, give me, give me, give me. I don't like it. All right. Well, what's wrong with the youth in America? Yeah. Is, there better not be any AWA kids hanging over the bears. You know, they're asking dudes. Hey, you know what? After dudes lose, they're like, hey, Jordan, can I get your... It's crazy. I was at one. One of our kids got Jordan single at a bunch. I think it was when it was in Madison, or maybe it was his, maybe it was a shirt. I don't. I don't recall what it was. If they want to uh, take it maybe. off and, and get, but like, I don't know why. It just if Caleb did that, if Nally did that, I would say be quiet, ask <laughs> ask for stuff. But they would never do that. <laughs> Some other maybe big names. No insight here. Just looking at age. Um, guys like Gwiz. Yeah. Ooh, Ringer. Um, I'd say no on that one. You'd say no on Ringer? He's not that old. He's 31. How old do you think he is? 31? Yeah, he's 31. Gra- oh, oh, maybe. He graduated. Hey, maybe he's 29. Old. Hold on. He graduated in 16. I might be you confusing him your... with someone else. He was born in 1993. That would make He him might be 31. 30. He's 30. 30. 30. 30 going on 31. Nico. Yeah. What about Jaden Cox? Feels like it. Feels he's not like that old though. Not that old, but I've, it just feels. It's just a feeling. Yeah. It's just four more years. How much he's weight 29. do you put on that? Uh, of truly thinking in terms of quad versus world yes. world titles. Like I think we yes. think all those guys could go and wrestle at the level they're at for another couple of years. But do you really, if you think in terms of quad, are you willing to put yourself mentally and physically through that for another four years, which is a long time? Mitchell Messenbrink. Yeah. I think he's lost the fire. <laughs> I think he's just kind of tired of wrestling. He's done. He's done. <laughs> um, are we not saying Kyle Dake because we feel he's going to win? Or are we not saying Kyle Dake because we think mm. he's going to continue? Because The I question is I think if they I... lose. Oh, if they, if they oh, lose. Oh, okay. I I feel like he's probably Here's the thing. I feel like he gonna he's in a weighing the decision process in where his it's not black and white. I'm done after 24. Like I think he'll take a uh, take a beat and then decide, you know? Well, how old is he? 22? <laughs> <laughs> no. He's 30 th- some. Ben, how much do yeah. you think these guys at this extremely high level think about retirement while they're still actively pursuing? I think they do. Like, it's how can you not? Should. But how, how can you not? Yeah. So many. How much? How much do you try and put that out of your brain and just be like, "I got to get this done." First, I didn't. I mean, I, I said this is my retirement fight, and I'm done after this. Um, and then obviously I came out of retirement, but you know, there was an intention to retire and I did, I did, I did put a caveat that was met. And so that was why I came out of retirement. Um, I think they got to think about it. And that's, that's kind of sometimes where athletes fail is they don't, they don't consider their future. And then, you know, they also one day they say, Oh, I'm done. Right. Or like for, you know, professional sports, maybe they can't make the team. Right. And they haven't considered their future at all. And then it's like, Oh crap, what do I do? Right. Yeah. And then that's when like fighters end up, they keep fighting because they don't have anything they want to pursue, you know, post competitive career. Um, so I think that's really, really important. I'm always, I'm, not, I'm no longer surprised, but for a while there, you, you would hear these guys' interviews after a triumph or a win or something. And they so many times they'll talk about, man, I thought I was done. I thought I was going to retire. I considered retirement. And David Taylor was open about it. Like, hey, I thought it, you know, my wife had to kind of help talk me back into it. So I think it's something they are thinking about and confronting, and it's like a hurdle they have to almost like, not for all all athletes, but they get over it, and it almost like is a re yeah. okay. I've decided I'm going, and then I'm going full out. I think it's something they have to get past and like tackle frequently. So that's kind of my thoughts. You, you just mm-hmm. hear sometimes you hear some people talk about you can't have one foot out the door when you're trying to compete. Yeah. At the highest level, yeah. like you have to be all in. That's why I think they're like, they talk about it. They think about it. They approach it. They evaluate. And mm-hmm. then they say, no, I'm not. And they go. And so in that mm-hmm. way they do stay all in. 
you think there's any part of yeah. David Taylor that wants to stick around to try to get the most gold? Um, probably. I don't know. At least if some would, part of it. I don't know if it would be that reason necessarily. Maybe it is. Um, I think when you're wrestling, how many does he have already? He has, he has four. four. So he'd have to win a whole nother quad to beat Jordan's record. He has win four more. Yeah. If you go a whole nother quad, how much of it is is that reason where I want to be the undeniable greatest of all time? Although you can always deny, deny it because John did six straight. Um, yes. Although Taylor, if it if could, Taylor could. He could, yeah, he could. Um, versus how much of it is, well, why would I retire when I'm winning? Yeah, I think I'm too. still the best. I, I think that's a lot. He's like enjoying it. He's having fun. He's found a really... He's found a balance that I don't think a lot of people thought would it, you could really obtain in wrestling and be the best in the world and do all the different things he's doing. But he's found a way to, to do that. And um, I have a question for the two olds in, in here. JD. Okay, hit me. <laughs> JD. JD and Tyler. Uh, so what was the difference in your bodies between 33 and 37? What changed? Because David you Taylor's 33 Christian right a high-level athlete. I got, I got next, <laughs> quad, next Olympics, he'll be 37. Yeah, I got in incredible shape in that quad. <laughs> so, um, Dude, honestly, my hip made me think I was getting old, older faster because I literally had that hip surgery, and I got out of it, and it was like, oh, damn, so much, so much pain was gone. And so I think for me, that, that gave me like a false sense of how old I was getting because I was having so many issues from that thing. And I, I didn't realize all the issues were from that thing. And I, and I got through that thing and it was like, oh, wow, wait, this is different, you know? So I think that really started becoming problematic. We'll say right around maybe a little before 30 or, you know, right around is when it really started like flaring. And I dealt with it for a handful of years. And then once it was done, it was like, oh, I think it would have been way different had I done that earlier. Obviously, Ben and I are very different, but like when I turned 37, from like 37 to now is when I've just had to started having way more annoying, nagging things that never happened and yeah. slower recovery. So that's kind of when it happened for me. But if I could dedicate my entire life to taking care of my body, like, and that was all I did was just train that's and true. do that. I don't think I would be experiencing a lot of these things. So yes. um, I'm certain that David could find that balance. Um, Bigger easy. guys, too, you feel like almost have an easier time. Yeah, they got it easy. <laughs> <laughs> like well, with longevity. I mean, you see it in the UFC. Yeah, because yeah. speed speed is the different factor. Yep. The lightweights. Well, we uh, have three. Oh. Yeah, to kind of parlay off that, uh, wrestling knowledge and technique. Yes skill and mentally aside do we know generally speaking for males what is their physical peak age window i think i think any time between early 20s and late 20s mm -hmm. that would be my take I, th like, I think it's kind of a lo longish window like i think and obviously some people mature early say so i think of like a kyle snyder who was very mature when he won a world title at 19 um physically mature and strong um and then i think you know, I do think your body starts going downhill in maybe late 20s, early 30s, somewhere in there. So I, I think it can be kind of a longer window. I do want to give some people context. I remember when Kale Sanderson came out of retirement to make the world team in 2011. Yeah. A lot of people were like, oh, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but we're, we're at the time where people were like, oh, he's old. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, because he'd been retired for seven years. So at that, that point, time, yeah. he was the same age that David Taylor is right now. Yeah. Kind of crazy. 33 yeah 33 so yeah that's unreal just a fun fact for you right there um speaking of david taylor what are we to make with nike signing dt good pickup I that's for no sure idea. um yeah. figure he can move some merch the the bigger thing out of it was the departure from scrap life a company he'd been yeah. with for a long time was not just a uh not just an athlete that was signed but he was he had deep he was deeply embedded within that that uh, company, so I think that was kind of the thing that stood out the most to me. But uh, people want to know what that same question person wanted to know if it it might be a sign of anything between his and Bo's relationship. Uh, I don't want to get into that, but I'll I'll say this: I, I, I we're gonna pass on that. Um, <laughs> uh, it, 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 yeah, but what I will say is 
signing you don't if if David was going to be done in 2024 do you there, si- yeah, do you so. sign with a shoe company one week before trials yeah that's what it, yeah mm-mm. that's 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 uh if you're you know we love reading the tea leaves that that to me says he he's not he's not going to be done in 24 i don't know remains to be seen i don't think that's a decision that's been made in finality for david but yeah. Uh, lo- looking at things wouldn't surprise me. Last question before we end the show. Okay. Just quick in a row. What's your most anticipated match for the Olympic trials this weekend? Mm. Thomas Cummins, right, Spencer, Spencer TPG. Oh, ooh, that's great. I love the I was thinking 74 kilograms in general. Uh, there's just so many storylines. Can Carter make the weight? Ooh. How are the young guys going to do? Is it going to be JB versus Dake again? Like there's kind of a lot of fun. That's a hundred matches. Dake, Dake versus Burroughs. Yeah. To me, so, so Thomas you have Gimlin to pick Spencer one. Lee. Okay. Thomas Gimlin, Spencer Lee, or Dick versus Burroughs? Yeah. Both of, both of those are. No, great. all right. It's not, well, that's not what I said. Um, Give me Jordan <laughs> Jordan Dake. We're playing the intro for the outro. It's fine. <laughs> we will be back Thursday. Me and JD. And you. And Tyler. And me. Oh, we'll be in State College, PA, because we're leaving Wednesday. Ben's going to be right there. Are we doing a basement? He's gonna be his ba- yeah, we better. Up. Okay. All right, boys and girls and men and women. Thank you for watching. We will see you Thursday. Ben's gone. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's over. That's it's how you know one, it's over. But I'm still going to dock him. All right, thanks. See you guys.